Sunita is the number one team in California. This guy's been rising like a star for the past seven years, just kicking ass left and right all over the place. And I talk to everybody. Like I literally talk to the top teams yeah. every day of the week. Robert Slack, you know, like uh, Tristan, uh, you know, uh, all these people all over the country and Canada. So I'm literally talking to people all the time that are just always expanding my brain. And um, we just kept growing and just kept recruiting and kept leveraging and um, like all gas, no brakes, right? And, you know, we've had a lot of fun and we've, you know, we've, uh, we've, we've accomplished a lot and we've made a lot of money. And the people in my organization have made a lot of money, right? Uh, down to the agents, the staff, the ISAs, the VAs in the, in the Philippines are buying new houses that work in my organization, right? Like, Welcome to Real Estate Influencers Podcast with your host, Alex Montalenti and Mario Hurley. Today, we're excited to be with Sunit. Sunit is the number one team in California. This guy's been rising like a star for the past seven years, just kicking ass left and right all over the place. I see him on social media. We met at Explode. We met on the speaking circuit. I saw you speak. You saw me speak. We hung out at a hockey game. We walked through portals. We walked through <laughs> portals. We teleported to hockey stadiums. We've done some amazing shit in our life. And here we are on this podcast. So I'm excited to talk with you. Yeah, man. Thank you for the opportunity. Always an honor to uh, come on and talk to people that I know and people that I don't know. And, uh, you know, share some stories and hopefully motivate some of the viewers and listeners. Absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. And Sunit, the, the biggest thing that... I was in made me think about you when I asked Alex, I said, so who is this gentleman here? He just showed up on our calendar. I didn't get a chance to research on him. What about him? And he said, well, you know what? He just took off. Something happened that he just took off. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's, that's the kind of story we love to hear because we kind of just took off recently and we don't want to ever go back to moving slowly. So I would love to hear like, what exactly was there something in your mindset? What happened that, you know, now you're like number one and like you're not stopping? So great question. Right. And I think like it's maybe a little bit longer story. But, Take your time. Um, yeah. Well, I'm, a, I'm really good at telling it now. Um, so, right. Like I've been licensed for seven years. Uh, I was the number one agent after my sixth year. Number one team after my sixth year. Um, you know, I've been real estate coaching for six years i've been licensed for seven years right so yeah. um i had come from the cannabis industry and yeah. got out of that in 2012 you know we helped create that and legalize it here in california and do all that fun stuff so you know hey. different different story right so got out mm -hmm. of that in, in 2012 and was kind of just I didn't know what direction. I had been a loan officer and a branch manager for a uh, smaller mortgage company previously to uh, cannabis. And, you know, and I was really confused. I was consulting, you know, I live on a ranch and I was like breeding American bulldogs at the time, right? Like I was just kind of like wherever. So I, uh, yeah. so one of my buddies called me and said, hey, you really need to do something with your life. I hadn't really done much in about a year and a half. And I said, um, do I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm making okay money right now. I'm, I'm comfortable. And um, I just got my real estate license. I made 450 grand this year. Come to find out he was exaggerating, but that's okay. That was the motivation that I needed. So I went and got my license again and went and joined a brokerage and, um, you know, a traditional brokerage. I may have been one of the youngest people there at the time. Nobody used a CRM. Nobody used any of this stuff. And my first week of being a realtor, I started buying online leads. I went to Zillow. I had $400 and I spent it on whatever leads I could get for 400 bucks a month. Uh, turns out that those zip codes were the most challenged areas that nobody else would buy, but I didn't care. Right. And then I found out that the brokerage has a free CRM um, that nobody used, literally. So I figured out how to use it. I had a great agent in there, my friend, uh, Veronica um, Hunter, and she showed me how to use it. 
And I said, wow, like there's, like there's really a thing here. And I went online and I showed up. I showed up every damn day, which looking in hindsight, I don't know if that was necessarily the best use of my time and dry clean shirts, but I showed up every day. Uh, and I just dug deep and I started to educate myself. So within that first year of being licensed within nine months, I was rookie of the year um, for the entire West Coast for Cobalt Banker. I was like, well, this shit is easy, right? Um, yeah. Learning scripts, learning processes, leveraging tech. I like social media. I had a Napster account. I know how to rip a fucking CD. I like tech, right? I can make a website. Um, yeah. Nice. Um, and, I, and I know how to market. I marketed cannabis very effectively, right? And it really led to massive success in that industry back, you know, in a different time. Um, so I really dug deep, right? Um, I left Colwell just over a mindset thing and I went to Keller. And at Keller, I really learned more about, you know, they're, it's a really great place for, for education. And I don't, don't think I could have got there at a better time. Um, and, you know, my team leader, we went to lunch. It may have been right around now, or like this week, it was right around Christmas. And I was like, how do I get more leads? Yeah. She said, you should go to Lab Code Agents. <laughs> So I went to Lab Code Agents and I was talking to Tristan, who uh, you said has, has been on as well. I was talking to, I yeah. just started harassing Tristan. <laughs> DM, 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 DM. Like not trying to harass him on purpose, but looking back, I was definitely harassing him. Um, yeah. And he really helped me out. Wow. And then from there, like he you know, showed me more platforms. I got involved with Club Wealth, became a coach there, got more involved with Lab Code Agents, uh, went to got more involved with speaking and going to events. And you really learn good shit at an event. I, I went to an event and an agent in my marketplace said on stage was one of my first real estate events, uh, Club Wealth, um, business strategy mastermind, maybe the second one. And this agent said, whatever I can do, you can do. And I said, you know, she's fucking right. Mm. And she's in my market. So number one, like crush all the competition is, was what I learned and leverage systems, leverage relationships, network with people. And that networking, you know, introduced me to Sam and those guys that we were talking about earlier too, from Big Block, uh, you know, and that opportunity came and I opened up their first um, franchise, which was great. Opportunities, right? Conversations. I got involved with the Cheplak uh, coaching organization and you know, John and Tristan and Sam, like these people all really indirectly or directly mentored me um, and traveling and reading and listening to every podcast. And you know what the secret is? You fucking implement shit. You don't just listen. <laughs> just kind of, it's literally what's going through my head right now. Education right? alone never helped it. anyone. Right. And I do. And I talk to everybody. Like I literally talk to the top teams yeah. every day of the week. Robert Slack, you know, like uh, Tristan, uh, you know, uh, all these people all over the country and Canada. So I'm literally talking to people all the time that is just always expanding my brain. And um, we just kept growing and just kept recruiting and kept leveraging and um, like all gas, no brakes, right? And, you know, we've had a lot of fun and we've, you know, we've, uh, we've, we've accomplished a lot and we've made a lot of money. And the people in my organization have made a lot of money, right? Uh, down to the agents, the staff, the ISAs, the VAs in the in the Philippines are buying new houses that work in my organization, right? Like we are so um yeah, that's kind of the macro view, man. Just you know, my anniversary of being licensed is in January, eight years, and like my team is I've been licensed for shorter than some of the top teams in the state that I crushed with production and continue to. So that feels good. Absolutely. What I'm, what yeah. I'm hearing from, from your story is that number one, you saw a real opportunity in terms of making a whole lot more money. And you, you sounds like you're very competitive. Like you're really, when you see an opportunity, you go for it and you understand that, you got to do the work. It's not just like, oh, it's great stuff. That sounds good. I should do it sometime. Like you right away implement, implement, implement. So tell us more about like your work ethic, your your mentality when it comes to like, like how do you take on opportunities? Like why? Um, 
So that's a good question. And I think that, yes, uh, mindset is very important. Confidence is important, but you really get confidence from experience, mm. right? So um, I'm experienced in so many facets now. Uh, maybe I get experienced quicker. Maybe I just physically have more experience, like actually have it. Um, I've dealt with many different types of people across different industries, like the people in the cannabis industry in 2008 and realtors in 2022, you couldn't get much fucking different. Let's be honest, right? Like, um, so, and that's the whole thing, right? Is in all of this business relationships, is that what it really, that's what it comes down to, right? Is it's about the people. Yeah. So you have to be nimble and really able to deal with people and deal with yourself, right? And not get fucking bummed out when um, something doesn't go your way or not be bummed out when, you know, a relationship is, you know, professional. I'm not going to get into relational here. I think my wife can hear me in the next room. When I walk out, she'll give me shit. You don't really mean that. That's not true, asshole. But um, like business, like it's all about the people. And then how do you navigate that? And how do you become better at that? And how do you motivate and also, them and lead them, right? Yeah, and I also hear like it's about being unstoppable. Like you, you just look like you like bulldozed your way through. You're just like, I'm going to be unstoppable. I'm going to go for it. And what I love about what the story that you shared is like, and it, it sounds like you pulled it from social media even, is like you looked on social media and said, who are the biggest influencers? Where are the biggest people I can learn from, right? Like Tristan Ahumada, Lab Code Agents Group, you know, 130,000 agents. He's talking about tech. Let me suck the knowledge out of there and implement it, right? Let me go to these, these shows, these conferences, learn from these amazing speakers, and then implement it. It's like for the agents listening, it's like, stop going to conferences. If you're not yeah. going to implement it, why are you going? You're just wasting your time. If you're going to go and actually take action on it, awesome. And that's like what you did. And in a short amount of time, you're able to leapfrog over some of these people that have been in the industry for 20, 30 years. And even though we're all preaching tech, tech, do this, use your CRM, you know, follow up on your leads, all this stuff, and you're not doing it. And then they're, they're dying. Yeah. And you're thriving. Yeah. Dude, that's it. And I think that you nailed it. And maybe I missed that, that important part. I elevated my rooms nonstop, right? I went to the basic events, to the, you know, to the bigger ones, to the mat, the intimate, the inti in intimate masterminds, like the closing table that Sam was running, right? You know, going to John's events. And I mean, dude, like the caliber of people in these fucking rooms is professionally only is really high from where I wanted to be. And I was able to hang out with people um, like, you know, someone who I admire is Gary Ashton, right? And, you know, I talked to people in his organization, his guy Scott is one of my closest friends, Gary and I talk often, and I got to be in a room with Gary multiple times. And I can say that that has helped my career, right? I got yep. to be in rooms with these other people and I can say that that has helped my career. Maybe it's just thinking bigger. Maybe it's the networking opportunities. Like, dude, like, it's weird, but uh, people say, like, everybody likes me, <laughs> right? Like, so it's, it's just the networking, being likable, um, learning. Yes. All the That's shit a big one. that everybody reads about. It's all, well, it's that, all actually real. But I want to ask you, this is crucial for me personally, okay? Because I'm a coach as well. I, I coach in our company. Um, I have coached before, not around real estate, but around just being somebody who don't let life happen, but you make life happen how you want it to go. Sure. And <clears throat> I found that sometimes people don't like me because I'm the kind of guy that's going to just tell you to your face, hey, that sucks. Like you're being lazy or you just lied or et cetera. And people are like, oh, man, that's not nice. You should, you should not do that. But you're like, people like me. People like me. They want to work with me. It's, it's great. It's like a fun. If you, wanna, if you do something with me, you're going to love that experience. So where do you do? Do you just do things to make people happy? Or are you also like, oh, hell no, bro. I'm so fucking direct. 
<laughs> Don't you know that by now? We've been talking for 28 <laughs> minutes. I'm the most direct guy, right? And a lot of my agents and staff, they may be a little frightened of my directness. Um, and maybe there are people that don't like me. I just don't fucking know, okay, <laughs> right? Um, but like, as far as the learning process, yeah. like in those rooms, I was a likable person. You know, Cialdini, the third law of you know persuasion is be likable. Um, you know, the how to win friends and influence people, right? So be likable. I'm direct. Do you think I'm? Do you think I'm doubting anything when I say that? Like I am direct, and okay. a lot of people. Like, dude, the highest form of love can often be accountability, right? Oh, yeah. And many people don't know that that's what they're craving. Mm. So they get a big old dose and then they like it. Oh, that's beautiful. That's, that's beautiful. What is this? You, you share some of the books you read. It sounds like you got a lot of wisdom from some books, some material you, you, re, you studied. Yeah, I mean, so... I used to be a much better reader. I spend more time in the gym now than I used to. I don't know what the purpose is and my reading has gone down. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, and I, I listened to some podcasts that I learned stuff from, I, you know, and I have read some books, you know, my favorite sales book for every real estate professional, our sales professional listening to this and watching this, get Matt Ferry's, Matthew Ferry, Mike Ferry's son, Tom Ferry's big brother, interesting dude, uh, get Matt Ferry's book, Creating Sales Velocity. Actually, don't get the book, get the audible. It's two hours, 45 minutes. Matt Beautiful. is dropping NLP on you the entire time and reprogramming you and you will learn how to be a more effective salesperson and communicator. Listen to it, everybody. Listen to yeah. it. Listen to it again. It's two share. hours and 45 minutes. Um, share with the team and I'll do that. Yeah. Um, I like Jordan Peterson. I like all his shit, right? Um, I like, I, you know, for a podcast, I think Ed Milet is, is motivating. Robert Greene with his laws of power, that's motivating. Um, I like Tim Grover. I'm looking at my books. I like Tim Grover a lot. I'm sure, I mean, everyone does. He's got some good traction but i think uh what he says is relevant and the sports comparison not that i wasn't an athletic person like let's be honest like i was the last kid picked i don't know um back then now i'm the first one but um hey. i i i like the parallels with like sports to mindset and yeah just mostly mindset i could say business but it's really a mindset and let me ask you when, because we are training coaches. I mean, we're training realtors, brokers, offices all the time. And we've already run into the po point where we are repeating the same message we've been saying for the last 20 plus years, right? Grow yep. your brand, be consistent, uh, leverage your connections, social media. And they're like, yeah, yeah, that's so true. I'm so bad at this. I'm so bad at this. And then nothing happens, right? A year later, nothing happens. How do you implement with yourself and with your team? So like from theory, from like, that's a great thought into like, do it. Well, for my team, like, I'm not going to wait for them to do anything. I'll have my staff members set it up and we'll just fucking do it. Like, here's the thing where teams and brokerages and organizations get confused. Like mm. people become a realtor for a wide variety of reasons. The main reason is usually not to be a fucking phone salesperson. Right. So everybody out there telling your agents to make calls, they're missing the mark. Mm. So, so what do you do in that case? Well, you hire in, or create a robust ISA team, right? Um, yep. Agents don't want to be marketers. They just don't. They don't know how. It doesn't do whatever for them. Some do, right? But in fucking general, the average agent that joins your organization, what do they want to do? They want to go on and sell houses. So I'm just going to do it all. And as long as I get money out of the deal and something, then, then I'm good, right? But there's ways to leverage and, you know, use great tech and have the relationships where I'm just, you got to manage your expectations. 
Wow, that's huge. That's pretty much how we were born, Mr. Alex. Yeah. How many members on your team? 70. 70? Yep, and we're hiring if wow. you're in Northern California. Join Sacramento's top team.com. But yes, 70 agents on the team. That's Amazing. a cool 70 domain. 70 agents, about 12 ISAs, and about 18 other staff. 20 other staff on the team. And then in the brokerage, I have 150, um, which includes the 70. So in the brokerage, I have another 80 um, with about another five, six people on staff. So the team is robust, bro. Like I have analysts. Like if you have a listing appointment, you can send a message in a Slack channel and one of my analysts will give you a CMA, right? And it's who's a former appraiser. Like we got shit like that flowing. Nice. So um, robust ISA team, robust, like untouchable as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we set like five, 600 appointments a month, bro. Wow. So, in, nice. so in terms of um, what you said, that the fact that agents don't want to be marketers, how do you identify the ones that say, no, I, I like what you do. I want to do the same. I want my face there. I want to promote. I want to do social media versus the one that just want to go sell houses. Just keep it simple. I mean, I don't think it's my job to identify them. I think that they identify them themselves, right? Because mm. they actually fucking do it. <laughs> like, I'm tired what, of telling what life. To what life demonstrates. Yeah, like, I'm tired of telling agents to fucking post on Instagram and tag somebody, right? Like, I'm tired of saying... Post us on Facebook. Like, don't, because I'm going to do it anyways. And the ones that do and see success, like, here's a funny, here's a funny parallel. Yeah. My number one agent and number two agent in my organization, my number one agent is a single mother of three. Husband passed away. She's going to sell 110 houses this year. 110. She also hits the gym every day and has traveled more than anybody I know this fucking year. She posts on everything every day. Nonstop. My number two agent loves Instagram. He's always posting on there. A lot of his pictures of his dogs and kids, but hey, me too. People still want to see that shit, probably more yeah. than anything else. Number two. So my number one and number two agent who make a lot of money post nonstop. The number 30 agent, the number fucking 50 agent who aren't making much money, or excuse me, number 50 probably isn't doing shit. A couple houses a year. Number 50, they still don't post. So they see me post nonstop. They see number one post nonstop. They see number two post nonstop. How much more do I got to fucking tell you? <laughs> what am I going to say that's going to change your life? If your motivation and the social proof, it's actual social proof. You see these people making more money, having more success than you by doing this so you don't do it. What am I going to say to you? Hey, bro, I think post on social media. <laughs> so you recommend posting on social media, I guess. I recommend <laughs> doing something. You can sit, everyone uses the damn restroom when you're sitting on that fucker, post on Instagram and Facebook. That's a great tip. I love it. <laughs> Toilet time, it posting free. time. Right. Yeah. You don't have enough time when you go to the bathroom, post on social media. Yeah. <laughs> right there. I love it. <laughs> that's perfect or send an email or do something no i love it yeah, i mean that's that's why yeah. we're in business right i mean we post for them because they don't want to yeah so you know services like you guys are highly valuable for a lot of people that just won't do it right it's crazy it is crazy i love i love what you said the fact that you're tired to, of telling them uh because i think that's kind of like what's going to be very telling in the upcoming years where those folks who have been making excuses and resisting are just going to be like, they're going to need to find another career or just give up the dream of making a lot of money because give it up. Gonna Dude, stop the, asking the gap. Them. Dude, the mm -hmm. gap is just going to be so big. It's like, okay, I've got 10,000 followers on TikTok. You're not on TikTok. I've got 50,000 followers on Instagram. You have a hundred on Instagram. I mean, who are you going to list with? Dude, my challenge it's TikTok, honestly. I forget about it unless it's late at night. 
and I should just really schedule it, but our Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn games and YouTube are tight as fuck, but yeah. Right. Uh, we, we do have, I mean, we do have, for my uh, educational brand, Hustling Agent, we do have a channel, just, um, I'm not managing that one, but yeah. It sure is entertaining. Yeah. I like looking at TikTok. I can see funny shit, food, puppies. Yes. There's a lot, there's a lot on there. I mean, it's just getting started, right? It's but so it's, fun. It's moving, it's so it's moving quick. Good. Yeah, I wanted, yeah, wanted so to ask you, you, you made a move from, uh, you did Coldwell Banker, you did KW, and then you met Sam and you moved over to Big Block. Tell me what's going on at Big Block. Like what, what had you move over there? I mean, obviously I know Sam and I, I know he's, he's, he moves quick and he's out there big time. He's spoken at tons of events and that company, your company is moving quickly. But what well, had, like what had you me, move over? I was at, I was at Coldwell. I, I moved to Keller just for the um, mindset opportunities, which I was sold on at the time, the MREA book. It really sold me. Um, so good job to Gary Keller out there. Um, but um, met Sam. I wanted to do a broker. Well, here's the challenge. I was at Keller or any split shop and I had a team and the agents were having a challenge paying the brokerage split and the team split. So the retention of good team members was a challenge. And I realized that really fucking fast. So I said, done, I'm going to go to a hundred percent shop. So we moved and I got to the hundred percent shop uh, whose name I won't mention. And um, I didn't like their level of support. I thought it was, I'm trying not to cuss. I thought that it was really challenging for us to operate at our, at our highest p- potential with that level of, of support. And honestly, I like being the fucking boss. Um, so I called Kevin Markarian, who you also know. And I said, mm-hmm. Kevin, I need to do a brokerage and Sam and I were good friends at this point, like traveling and going to Napa and getting drunk and shit. Right. So, um, which is always fun. Um, one of my favorite people to party with is Sam, um, and eat good food with. And, um, so he's all, well, I'm thinking about franchising big block. I said, well, I don't even know what that means, but let's fucking do it. (laughs) I don't think he knew what it meant yet either. Right. Um, and, you know, about a year later, we just slapped open a brokerage. Um, my, like, my team has always led the charge, right? Because the, the team is kind of a, I mean, it's uh, been around longer. Um, and just being able to bring my team into an environment that I control and I have the flexibility if an agent doesn't want to join my team, fine. Here's a hundred percent shop. If I need some agents and some people want some more leads and some more opportunities, hey, I have a hundred percent shop, right? So for me, I like being the goddamn boss, number one, and number two, the flexibility, and number three, did I say I like being the boss? I don't know. No, that's great. That, that's huge. That I, I like being the boss. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got I got a good one for you <clears throat> as the boss, as the guy that's taking the lead. And I love the fact that you, this is something actually even Alex, if I may just share, this is something you started doing recently. Like you're no longer waiting for confirmation from anyone else. You're not looking for everyone to agree with your direction. You're just going to go for it and they can catch up along the way or just go in a different direction. Yeah, Absolutely. dude, like I don't have any attachment to any outcome. Mm. That's huge. So that if it doesn't work, if it just falls on its face, what? Dude, I have been there multiple times. I'll pick myself back up. I've been through the fucking ringer. Any stories like, you can share with us? Industry. Any good one? That's that's okay. Yeah, I share? mean, dude, like mortgage meltdown. Right. Like that was my first career. And um, I had a lot of debt. I owned a lot of fucking worthless shit. I was in a bad relationship. Um, and I was making a lot of money and I was partying way more than I should. And I think everyone's been there. <laughs> but I was partying way more than I should. And uh, it kept crashing and burning. That was a highly emotional time. 
right? And then, you, you know, we, we got into cannabis and there was lots of major challenges there that ended up being enough that I got out. And that was, you know, so I really think for the viewers and listeners there, like, are you relentless? Do you have grit? What are other some what are some other good words? Fucking bulldozer, like you said, Alex, and right? Being, un- like, being unstoppable, being committed, yeah, being bold. I mean, I'm practicing being bold and committed right now. Yeah. And like be I'm bold not, and just, committed. Just going for it. Like I did not want to hit this bike for 45 minutes this fucking morning. My bed was really comfy. It's cold as hell here in Northern California. And you guys are in Miami. So when I say cold as hell, it's like 50, right? Um, so you guys get it. Um, and I didn't want to get out of bed. We got we got a new puppy. I got another puppy like four months ago. I had both puppies sleeping on me. My bed was warm. Wife was laying in bed with me. And I was like, fuck. But I'm much better that I got that done. So treat everything. Get your reps in, right? Get your reps in. You, do you want to grow? Get your fucking reps in. Yeah, like I, I just had a bet with my girlfriend. She's like, all right, when are you going to lose this weight? You like keep saying you're going to be healthy. You're going to lose weight. Come on, what's going on? And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to freaking do it. And, I, and I'm like, I'm going to put something on the line. You want to make a bet? She's like, yeah, I'll bet you that you can't lose the weight by Christmas. I'm like, all right, let's go. How much? She's like, I don't know, a thousand bucks. I'm like, really? A thousand bucks? I was like, all right, you're on. Let's do it. By what date and how much? She's like 198 pounds by December 23rd. So this, so I've been like going at it. I dropped, I stopped drinking. I haven't had a drink for 30 days. Oh, right. I've been, brutal. been going to, yeah, I've been going to the gym five days a week. I've been like doing all these health nutrients, been like watching what I eat, going to sleep on time and boom, I wake up this morning and I'm 196. Right. And then I'm like, I'm not stopping here. I went to the gym and I did a double workout and it's just like, I'm committed to just making this happen, but I'm not even like going to settle with, Oh, I, I beat, I beat it. I'm just going to like destroy the number. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's like, you but can't settle. Just, right? You can't it's get like, lazy. You, but what was your real motivation there? Was it the thousand bucks or was it to beat your lady in a bet? I think it was to beat my lady to show her up. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so that's, so that's what you were motivated by. Cause you already knew that yeah. you should probably lose weight or get healthier. Oh, yeah. Right. Totally. Fascinating. That's, that's the thing that I always know about people's we don't no matter even people that say, Oh, I'm not competitive. Yeah. But you don't like to just sit and lose. <laughs> You're still going to give your, your best fight, you know? So this is great to challenge somebody on like the area where they don't want to lose. That's like the sensitive touch. And when a girl tells you, Oh, you can't. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. Let me show you. It's great. Right. So, so let's let's talk, talk about as a leader. I was getting to that earlier. You're the leader. You're looking into the future. So share with us what kind of a vision. What are you foreseeing is going to happen, technology wise, social media wise, the industry. What do you see is going to happen in the next three to five years, dude? So maybe this is a bad practice of mine, but I'm focused on crushing it today. Right, every fucking day. So, um, I, you know, like I'll listen to an industry outlook or I'll read a fucking article or something and see what I think is right. Um, uh, something I get out of value is Buffini puts out a yearly thing with the dude, the chief economist, chief economist was Lawrence something E from uh, NAR. So they put out a podcast once a year and I mean, here's the thing. Markets may shift, this shit, that shit might happen, but you focus on today and fucking win the day, then you should be good, dude, right? And I'm going to like, my like my goal is, is I'm going to keep on recruiting agents, period. Like those humans are the biggest lever. I'm going to keep on recruiting agents. Gotcha. So regardless of what happens in the, in the market, technology, it doesn't matter. You got your, your recruitment happening on, on a regular basis. Keep expanding. You're ready for anything. Dude, it's all about the people. Like, like we started out, right? It's funny how yeah. it goes that way. Have you ever it's heard funny. of this book? It's called The Road Less Stupid. No. Is it good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me oh, write yeah. it down. <laughs> I've been reading it for the past six months, like multiple rereads of every chapter. On Audible, also very good. But I mean, you know, one of 
I'll just share one of the quick chapters that we just implemented is the three pillars of success. And he talks about, you know, the three pillars are number one, create your, your outcomes and just be present to what your outcomes that you're creating are every day. Number two is create your action steps. And then number three, have someone hold you accountable. Yeah, dude. Isn't that easy? Set a goal, make a fucking checklist and make sure that it gets done. <laughs> exactly. But we, um, it's like a when, when I ask people about that, they're like, what are you, what are you talking about? What's, what's an outcome? What do you mean by actions? What do you mean? Accountability. What's that? It's just Heck, that they haven't been, they haven't been exposed to it yet. You know, it's like, once you get it, you get a taste of the good stuff. You're like, oh, this is like, it's like that trainer that kicks your ass. You're like, yeah, I, I like that guy. Cause man, I look good. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Do you, do you have any vision or desire to become like a gigantic organization? So I think that that is funny. It is an interesting question because people ask me about expansion geographically all the time. I would rather just have fucking 20% of Sacramento, 30% of Sacramento. Really, I don't know. Maybe that's me being lazy and not thinking big enough. Um, I've had some challenges in being as effective as I want in geographic expansion. Um, I mean, dude, so I, I got 10% of the business in this town, right? That's really good. Yeah. Uh, a, a big metropolitan place like this. Um, if I had 20%, like, I'm fucking flying around in a helicopter, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, compared to, like, getting, like, half a percent of this market, half a percent of that market, half a percent of that market. Like, does that sound fun, bro? I don't know. Oh, it's, in it's interesting because we just had Gary Ashton on the show too. And, you know, he dominates Nashville and he's like, anything else? No, nah, I'm good. I got Nashville. <laughs> yeah, I got num exactly. Number one, number one Remax team in the world and yes. right out of Nashville. Yeah. See, that's the thing. And that's someone who I hang out with. Right. Yeah. So like, no, I could hear it. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Dude, 20% is a fucking helicopter taking me to the grocery store. No, that's beautiful. That's awesome. I like that. So just <laughs> it's crucial to be focused on really what gives you the satisfaction, not necessarily wanting to just be big for the sake of being big. Yeah, signing a bunch of leases, dude. Like, fuck that. That sounds painful. I hate the lease I got right now. Well, you know, I have two offices. Nobody shows up. California, not Florida. COVID craziness. Is it is it whatever people's opinion people's opinions in california shifted about going to the office uh-huh i see sometimes i think maybe my office just sucks no i think my office is pretty cool um but i, I mean i didn't go in for six months right so right. i'm going in after this but um yeah i don't know so and one last thing I want to I want to get from you. Tell us about what you do for leisure. I see you have instruments behind you. What do you do other outside of doing what you do here? Um, so I have all these guitars and amps and whatnot. They all have dust on them because I've been super busy recently. I've just really been focused on my coaching um, and growing that with John Cheplak. Uh, I've been getting a lot. Of satisfaction out of that and i like to chase those good feelings right um so i've been really focused on that um thankfully my organizations um are well managed and i can serve more as a true ceo role right mm -hmm. um i still get my hands dirty probably too often um but um to leisure i mean i don't know go to Vegas for a, for a weekend and just destroy the whole town and get it all, get all the leisure out for, for, a, for three months and then come back and go back to it. I have a five-year-old kid and a two, I have a five-year-old daughter and two-year-old two -year daughter. You have two daughters too, right, Alex? Yeah. So yeah, I love spending time yeah. with, with, with them, obviously right there, the best thing. Um, so yeah, I guess I just go on big trips, not big trips. I go on, really fun luxurious trips with okay. some frequency we got napa right down the street i love napa right napa's the shit 
Nice. Okay. So no, no sports. No, currently you're not doing your music either. Not doing music much right now. Uh, I don't, I mean, I don't physically go, I'm not a big fan of watching sports for me. It feels like a complete waste of time. And my kids are watching Bluey or some other fucking cartoon all day long. So I can't even get in, in front of my nice big TV with the surround sound if I wanted to watch something and enjoy it. So, uh, yeah, no sports. Just, you know, probably don't travel as much as I should. You know, my, you know, as far as like internationally or longer trips, although my wife would like to. So we got some trips planned for next year. But um, yeah, man, like work is fun. Honestly, just like you guys, like you guys don't want to turn it off at like nine o'clock at night, right? Like you're in there grinding. It's hella fun. I was on with a Facebook manager at 8 p.m. My kids are like, what's going on, dad? I'm like, it's Tuesday. You got to give me Tuesday nights is my work night. The rest of the oh, nights work- I take off. Yeah. What time do you take off the rest of the nights? Uh, I get out of work 530. I'm done. I got to I got to deal with them that when I pick them up, I'm not on the phone. There's no no work after that. It's just how about like, when you know. put them to bed? Do you look at your phone then and send some emails? I don't do work as much as I'll just talk to my girlfriend or hang out with my girlfriend. You know, wow! To, I got. I, I need to shut it off because otherwise, it's. I mean, I'm v- very active up here. So yeah, I do gotta, same. It, it, need, it needs a break, you know. Actually, what we had to do. We had to do this rule just so you know, Sunit, with Alex, because before we would be like super tight working on the business, tight, tight, tight all the time. Now he's he's mentoring people and everything, so he doesn't interact with me as much but it was like anytime six in the morning 11 o'clock two and three in the morning like oh we should do this oh check this out i'm like guys weekend so we said i had to set up a rule on the weekends we talk about everything else other than the business and that was good it served us right we were able to accomplish yeah, other totally. things relax all that now yeah, we kind sure of have much are using I'm sure you guys are using some kind of task management shared software like we do monday right so i get all my random ideas fire them off in Monday so I don't forget them and then assign them out and then we circle back and talk about it. Oh, that's beautiful. So let me ask you this. It's the end. It's the end of the year. You probably had a goal in mind for the end of the year and crushed it. What was your goal? I did. Yeah. What was your goal for this year? My goal was a thousand transactions. Nice. And what did you crush it? Fucking crushed it. Like how how many? Um, I mean, I would need to count. I haven't counted yet. Uh, I don't even know where to count. I need to ask you, someone who works. You didn't, you didn't crush it by like one or two, I'm imagining. No, crushed it by 50%, so by 1,500. There you go. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, so I mean, awesome. same with us. I mean, we set a revenue goal. We crushed it by over 20%, but it was a really yeah, high cool. revenue goal. Uh, I was more than, we more than doubled from last year. Good. Yeah. But, it, but I just listened to this podcast recently with uh, Dean Graciosi. And sure, I don't know if I you heard about this, where he puts like the lighthouse and he's like, okay, you got this goal, you're setting it. It's like the lighthouse that you're going towards. But what most people do is when they get to that lighthouse, you know, like number one agent in California or number one Remax team in the world or number one social media agency, whatever it is, you get to this lighthouse and you're like, all right, I'm here. And then you start to chill. But then he says, you can't just do that. You got to take the lighthouse and you got to move it out another hundred yards, right? And create like this next expansion, like where are you going next? So in asking you yeah. that, where are you, go- where are you going next? Where's your lighthouse So going? we're opening up some other businesses. We got property management. We got some other affiliated businesses that are rolling out in the next three months, which has massive opportunities, um, massive opportunities. So I mean, you know, like my goal, like, to be honest, my goal wasn't to be number one in California. Like, I didn't even think that was possible. My goal was to be number one in Sacramento. I was number one in Sacramento by like 300%. It was stupid, right? Um, And then it just so happened, I was talking to John one day and he's like, you know, how's it going? Do you do coaching? And I was all, bro, I think I'm going to be number one in the state. He goes, no, really? (laughs) And it happened. I was all like, this feels good. Uh, so now we got to get it again. So that's a goal. But then, you know, realistically, like I want to go both just really deep into the business and, you know, like look at Zillow. Zillow's opening everything up too. Why don't I fucking try and be like, oh, Sacramento's little mini Zillow, right? Like um, 
they got mortgage, they got escrow, like they're getting in all these ancillary. So why not me too? I like it. Yeah. Awesome. And just focus on coaching too and just recruiting and, you know, doing shit that I enjoy doing. And it's, you know, being a leader, marketing, recruiting, coaching, like um, those things are what I enjoy and make good money and bring my family what I wanted to bring them and just keep pushing, man. So what's keep your wanting- advice? Before we finish our, our episode, I would love to hear what's your suggestions or advice for our agents, both the new ones coming in and the old ones that have been around for a while. What, what would you say? You know, I mean, you- I would say like elevate your circle, have the right input to achieve the right output, right? Mm-hmm. Like uh, you want to talk about exercise, uh, exercise analogy. If you eat shit all day, you're not going to get fucking ripped. Pretty easy, right? If you hang around shit all day, you're not going to be successful. Uh, if you watch like only Netflix or only TV and don't get any educational shit in your head, well, you're not going to learn nothing. So control your inputs to control your outputs. I love that. Wow. Did I write that just now? I'm going to yeah, write that, that down. Shit. We're right going <laughs> to quote that. We're going to share that on TikTok. We're going to put that yeah. everywhere. Control we'll we'll give you the, we'll give you the credit. I'm feeling creative, right? You guys got me flowing. I love it. Good. Nice. Yeah. Thank thank you so much, Sunit, for, for coming. We'd love to have you again in the future. Talk about how things have expanded, talk about the progress, maybe do a couple um collaborations together even. Yeah, man. Hit me up. You guys know where to find me. And and you know where to find you for us. the opportunity. This was fun. Hell yeah. Good to see you, Alex. And nice to meet you, Mario, for sure. Thank you. Thanks.